Every year, Cave Board of Directors honors a distinguished members of the community for specific accomplishments and recognition for their work on behalf of English learners and by literacy programs. What an honor to start Cave 2018 with the recognition of our state superintendent of public instruction, our champion for English learners, our leader who is willing to roll up his sleeves, walk side by side with teachers and administrators, and to cross borders to meet and collaborate with colleagues in Mexico to address the needs of students on both sides of the border. State Superintendent Tom Torgson has been a great supporter of our literacy, multiculturalism, in his eight years in office, and is committed to providing a quality education for students who are English learners. The importance of giving our students the tools to become competitive in a global, competitive in a global economy, including providing by literacy and multicultural opportunities, is expressed in the superintendent's a blueprint for grade schools version one and two. The department supports a, on support on legislation affecting English learners, such as the state seal of by literacy. Let's give a shout out to the state seal of by literacy. <laughs> and the finding of who is a long-term English learner are examples of his commitment to improving the quality of education for English learners in California. Lastly, he has contributed to the, and supported the English roadmap, the English learner roadmap. And it was going to be very hard to see him go. But most importantly, I have spent much time, uh, a lot of time with Mr. Torlickson lately as my role as Cave president. And one of the, the most important thing about him is that he has the heart. And when you look at him in his eyes, he really is just a good person who really, really cares. And I appreciate him for being the humble and the courageous leader. On behalf of Cabe Boards of Directors, we are honored to present to you our state superintendent, Tom Torlickson. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Bienvenidos, amigos. This means so much to me. I truly am grateful. I'm moved. I'm inspired. And I'm really proud of you, of all of you. You are a team. We are a team. Somos un equipo fuerte. And we work together. And what we've accomplished, we've done together as a team. And so I, I say this is an award, a recognition really goes to all of us who've been part of the movement, all of you here and all of our colleagues back in the schools of California, helping our students learn, helping them reach for their dreams and ma make their dreams come true. And so again, I'm very, very proud of you as a team. And many of you know, I am a believer in the power of team, uh, the strength of team. So let's emphasize team. It'll be an exercise, just spelling, four, four letters, one word. Okay, so uh, team, what's it stand for? Just spell it out, T-E-A-M. And what's it stand? stand for, it stands for together, everyone accomplishes more. T-E-A-M, right? Together? Somos un equipo fuerte. And thank you, Cabe, for this marvelous conference year after year. You have great speakers, you have great workshops, and just your leadership, uh, you're showing the way, uh, you're organized, you're a force, and I appreciate that. And so let's hear it for Jan. And let's hear it for Lodia. Let's hear it for the whole Kabe team. They put this together for us. I like the theme. The theme, our theme for today for this conference, embracing multilingualism. That is exactly what we do here in California. We embrace people from all over the world who come here with their dreams. We embrace our diverse languages and we welcome different peoples with different cultures from around the world. In our state of California, diversity is our strength. 
Do we agree? This theme aligns with the California Department of Education vision and the CABE vision for embracing the more than 1.3 million bilingual English learner students in California, our English learners, to make them bilingual. And we support their families regardless of immigration status. And the California English Learner Roadmap is really powerful. It was mentioned, we're gonna talk more about it at this conference. But I wanna thank the State Board of Education for adopting it and all the, all the members who worked on the committee to make it possible to hammer out this, this great roadmap. The roadmap lays out a vision for educating English learners in a way that emphasizes quality of instruction and meaningful access. Together, these principles are the found, foundation for the roadmap and guide our state on the road forward towards achieving that goal of a multilingual California. We know language skills are critical for our students to succeed in college and in careers and in a fiercely competitive global economy. In 2014, CDE, my California Department of Education, began laying the foundation for multilingualism with the adoption of the integrated English language art standards and framework and the English language development standards and framework. We were the first in the nation. Thank you, all of you. Kabe, all of you. First in the nation, and I say best in the nation still to this day, right? And I wanna just take this moment just to have Tom Adams, my deputy uh, superintendent, to stand, and all of the CDE team, please stand. That's my team, Elena, Veronica Aguila. I'm proud of my team, they work so hard. Then in 2012, the Seal of Bioliteracy was launched proficiency, recognizing proficiency in two or more languages. We started with only a few thousand students in the first year, 50,000 students this year. What a way we've come. A hundred thousand, 150,000 altogether so far, but let's double it, let's quadruple it, right? Let's aim high and go far. We want so many more of our students to earn this seal of biliteracy. Now, unfortunately, in the midst of all this good news, we have new immigration policies put forth by the president that have spread fear and anxiety to thousands of students attending schools in California and across the nation. I have a different message. We extend the hand of friendship to Mexico and Baja California. The hand of friendship Debemos construir puentes, no muros. No mas muros. And I thank educators across California. We've worked with them to create a program to counter the fears that have been caused by the Trump administration policies. We've created an, a safe haven schools program. And I want to thank 130 school districts protecting over 2 million California students who've adopted resolutions saying we will, not, we will not have our students and parents live in fear. Our movement asks districts to spread the word to others that we welcome students of all backgrounds and their parents into our schools. And let me say it again, California welcomes all students and parents. We will not give up the personal information of our students and their parents. We will not. And we will not allow our schools to be arms of ICE. We will not allow our teachers to be immigration agents. We are gonna protect our students. We will resist, we will persist. And let's keep focusing, no matter what, move forward, let's keep focusing on the good news. The biggest good news is the passage of Proposition 58. A historic, phenomenal, thank you. You did it. You held on after 227 was passed and had all those antiquated, unfair, un-Californian type policies. We threw them out the window. 73% of California voters voted yes on Prop 58, saying we support bilingual education. 
We support knocking down the barriers that kept students away from bilingual education. And now parents and students are flocking to our schools demanding, asking for more teachers to help us. Our CDE team developed a bilingual teacher professional development program to provide professional learning opportunities to teams of eligible teachers, principals, and paraprofessionals. We must increase the number of teachers who obtain bilingual authorization. There's now a huge demand for that. Beginning this fall, schools will report the types of multilingual programs in California that are offered to students and the languages of those programs. We will create a statewide multilingual program directory where parents and the public can find a program that fits their needs in their specific location in California. And finally, for today, we must greatly expand the number of participating teachers in the California Department of Education teacher exchange program, our binational program. Let's quadruple it, the number of teachers in that program. That is my goal. Will you support me and help me get to that goal? And now to our friend, Secretario Miguel Angel Mendoza. He's here. We have Juan Carlos Mendoza also here. We have Liliana Ferrer here. To you I say and I say to you all, Mexico and California. Nosotros somos vecinos. Nosotros somos amigos. We are working together. We will work together. Mexico and particularly Baja California share a common heritage and a common rich history with the state of California. And we also share students who end up attending schools on both sides of the border. Nearly 50,000 US born students are attending school in Baja and many more thousands of Mexican born children are enrolled here in California schools. Students on both sides of the border need our help and our support. Many students have not mastered Spanish and are expected to learn it when they go to Mexico. Again, we need more teachers. And I thank you, my friend, Secretario Mendoza, for signing an MOU with CABE today, talking about our unity and moving forward together. We must do that together. So. Trabajando unido, nosotros un equipo fuerte. Moving forward con esperanza y trabajo, hope, and hard work, we will provide that equity and full opportunity for all of our students. Listos? Are you ready? For all of our students, are we ready to work together? Let's do it. Adelante. Muchísimas gracias for the recognition. Onward together. Thank you. You want another speech? No. <laughs> I want to introduce to you a very good friend of mine, un campeón de niños everywhere, just a wonderful person. He has a background as a city councilman in the city of Richmond. He's been a school board member. City of Richmond, let's hear it. West Contra Costa. So this gentleman has a great heart, corazón grande. He's full of energy. He's tireless and he cares about our children. He's focused his legislative career. He's an assembly member in the 15th district. He's passed many bills to stop the pipeline to prison and start the pipeline to jobs. And this is my friend, our friend, Tony Thurman. Please welcome Tony Thurman. Thank you, Superintendent Torlickson. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Nehoma, that's all I got. That's it. I'm done. Drop the mic. Bienvenidos a todos. Welcome to your capital. Welcome to the California State Legislature and to your capital in Sacramento. You know, with 2,000 of you here, this is your capital. You have taken us over. This is the House of Kabe. 
Truthfully, I'm only here because I, I'm part of the warm-up act for our real leader, Dolores Huerta. <laughs> Any opportunity that I get to be in the room with her, a friend, a mentor, a coach, I, I want that opportunity. And if you haven't seen her film, go see her movie right away. Uh, thank you, Dolores, for all that you've done for us and that you continue to do for us. I'm so excited to learn about what comes out of all of the workshops, and I'm impressed. I read it. There are over 200 workshops. Y'all not playing, are you? you? For real. I'm impressed about the support you're building for culturally and linguistically appropriate teaching. I'm impressed about promoting an integrated content across curriculum. And I'm very impressed to hear that you're using storytelling to teach grammar and algebra. Where were you 35 years ago when I needed that help? <laughs> Thank you for what you do. I want to give a shout out to all of my favorite principals. My notes here say, shout out all of your favorite principals. And you heard them. They're all from West Contra Costa. <laughs> Let me start with my children's principal, Ms. Maranakis. Thank you, Ms. Maranakis, for leading a great, diverse school. My coach and mentor, Wendy Gonzalez from Richmond and San Pablo, who's been leading us who literally has allowed me to be on her walk for 10 years. I understand that we have some parents in the house. Let's give a round of applause for all of our parents who are here today. Everything we do, we must do by building partnership with our parents and creating opportunities for our schools to be the center, to be open, to be the place for families to connect. And so thank you parents for being here. Thank you principals. Thank you teachers for being here. Are there any students in the house? Let's put our hands together for our students. Gracias a todos para sirven los estudiantes. Gracias. And thank you, each and every one of you, for what you do for the 1.3 million English learners in our state. Uh, it is really important to me as a legislator, as someone who helps to be able to continue the work of our superintendent, Tom Torlakson, to make sure that the roadmap is implemented. It's very important to me what you do for English learners every single day. Before you is the descendant of immigrants, of African slaves and immigrants from Panama, y Colombia, and Detroit, Michigan by way of Mississippi. <laughs> My, care, my parents came to California searching for the American dream. My father, a soldier. My mother, an immigrant from Panama, who was a teacher in San Jose. We lived in a low-income family. We were on every form of public assistance that you can think of. I was on the free lunch program. We were on the food stamps program. I tell people we ate so much government cheese that I thought that USDA was a brand name. <laughs> but these were programs that helped my family. And when my parents immigrated here, they immigrated here at a time when it wasn't okay to be bilingual or multicultural or multilingual. My mother immigrated here at a time when people said English only. And many people who I know who are English learners, their experience was one of not wanting to associate with their heritage because they felt the pressure of racism, they felt the pressure of those who said English only. And I'm so thankful to each and every one of you who have said that those days are behind us. We passed Prop 58, and we will never, ever go back. And for those who would provide fear-mongering for our immigrant families, we send the message to you, not here in the great state of California. We stand up for everyone, for our immigrant families. We've created a sanctuary state. We will not allow our schools to be places where kids are bullied, and we will make sure that they have the resources to get an education and to be successful. Because we know that the ability to acquire language brings many, many skills and benefits. It's proven that it provides you know, brain development and that it creates global leaders and global thinkers for the world. So why not double down and invest in every single English learner in the state of California to make sure that he and she get a great education. Thank you to our State Board of Education and our Superintendent Tom Torlakson for the English Language Learner Roadmap. I'm looking forward to working with you to implement that. Thank you for the $5 million that my colleagues in the legislature brought forward so that we can hire more bilingual educators in our state. And we won't stop there. This year we have a new bill and it's got a great sponsor, 
it's Kabe, <laughs> to provide another $3 million to support the expansion of dual language instruction programs for bilingual educators all throughout the state of California. There's much that we will do in the area to support English learners, but there's much that we must do in general to close the achievement gap for English learners and for all students. We've got to make sure we close our teacher shortage, and I'm proud to have a bill that gives a scholarship to anyone who wants to become a teacher in special education, in bilingual education, in science, in math. And we have a bill that would actually build affordable housing so that teachers and educators can afford to live in the communities where they work because we know our educators are often priced out of our communities. We're gonna expand STEM and STEAM education, science and technology and engineering and arts and mathematics for all of our kids and more career technical education for all of our students in the great state of California. Let's give them mental health supports. Our teachers don't need to have guns in their classrooms. They need the tools to educate our kids and give them a chance to learn and to grow and be successful. And the most important thing that I pledge to you that we can do to help all of our kids in the great state of California is move us from being 46 in the nation and per pupil spending. Our kids are number one. Let's give them number one in how we fund education in the state. Gracias por todo. Have a great conference. Thank you for being here. And wonderful greetings from the California State Legislature. Gracias. Thank you. Kabe values its partnerships, both domestic and international, and we are honored to have with us today representatives from our strategic partnership with Mexico. Please welcome from the Institute of Mexican Abro Mexicans Abroad, Instituto de los Mexicanos en el Exterior, IME, the Director General de IME, Juan Carlos Mendoza, accompanied by Consul Liliana Ferrer, of the Mexican Consulate in Sacramento. Hello, muy buenas tardes. Tengan todos ustedes. This is a wonderful honor and a great privilege. Liliana Ferrer and the Consul General of Mexico here in Sacramento. I've been here about eight months and I cannot uh, uh, see my 25 career having a greater privilege than serving as Consul General of Mexico in the US and in what greater place than in Sacramento, California. I am a daughter of the California educational system. I was just telling Superintendent Torlakson that I will be forever grateful to this state and to its educators. I'm a grad from Sac City College, from UC Davis, from UC San Diego, and California is deep in my heart. So a big round of applause to all the academic institutions. You have you have trained me well to represent Mexico, Mexico's interests, and the interests and the rights of my Mexican people. But it is a special recognition to the educators and the leaders of California that I applaud today. And in particular, I want to recognize together with Ambassador Juan Carlos Mendoza, who represents the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and who will be speaking shortly. I would like to recognize and ask you to stand up and give a special round of applause, number one, to all of you that are in the room today, but also to Superintendent Torlakson for his valuable contribution to our Mexican nationals, to their education, to their empowerment, and also a special recognition to the leadership of people like Jan Correa Gustafsson that also encourage you educators to promote bilingualism, multilingualism, and to promote education amongst the most vulnerable members of our society. So with that said, the Mexican government would like to recognize Superintendent Torlakson and Jan Correa and present them with this letter of recognition. Please, if we can all stand and give them a big round of applause on behalf of the Mexican government. We would like to recognize Superintendent Torlakson, thank you on behalf of Mexico. And Jan, if you could please come, Jan Gustafson Correa. Thank you, California, and thank you, educators. And with that, Juan Carlos Mendoza, thank you very much.
Good afternoon, California. Good afternoon, Cabin Family. Buenas tardes, México. I just want to say a few words related to education and some remarks additional related to the bilateral relation between Mexico and the United States. Uh, we are convinced that education is the best way to succeed. Today in Mexico, we have two million more students than in 2012. We have 25,000 full-time schools. That means four times the number of schools that we have in 2012. We have 7.7 .7 million students which have a scholarship. Nevertheless, Mexico ranks last in education among the 35 members of the Organization for Economic Cooperation, the OSD. To change this vulnerability, the President of Mexico passed the education reform. With this reform, we expect to modernize education in Mexico because it's, more, it's very important for us to succeed. Nowadays in Mexico, the jobs in the education sector are given by merit, not by connections. It's a very important reform. In addition, all the, uh, the teachers have to pass some uh, periodic tests, and we are teaching English since elementary school through uh, high school. So these are part of the uh, educative reform in Mexico, and we are granted more, more auto autonomy to the schools. We know that we have to take the good practices of the education in the United States, and one is, it, that is one of the reasons that we are here to learn about, about your succeed. We are believers of the shared responsibility. By shared responsibility means that we have 300 plazas comunitarias in the United States. Uh, President Peña increased the IME becas. We started the program IME becas in 2006 with 10 million. Now we uh, allocate 40 million dollars, 40 million pesos to this program. It's an increase of 300%. Uh, in California now we are developing nine ventanillas de oportunidades educativas. We just uh, start with this program this year with the support of the Minister of Economy. From May 7 to May 11, we are going to develop the first uh, binational week of education. We are committed with the bilingual education in the United States. We are going to support all the efforts uh, that you are having here. Uh, regarding the bilateral relations, just let me tell you a few things. Mexico buys more products from the United States than any other country. The BRICS, a very important group of countries, are buying together combined less products than the products that Mexico is buying from the United States. We buy products from the United States more than the United Kingdom, Germany, France, and Italy combined, more than Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, and South Korea. Uh, when we are exporting to United States, we're in incorporating 40% of American components. 40%, that means that for each dollar that Mexico exports to United States, previously we import from United States 40%. Uh, in order to make a comparison, Canada has a 25% of American components. Malaysia, 8%. South Korea, 5%. China, 4%. Japan, Two percent. So that means that we are producing together. NAFTA works an integrated manufacturer platform. That is the secret of NAFTA. Five millions of jobs in this country rely on the commerce with Mexico. For 27 states of the American of the Union, Mexico is the first or the second market for their exportations. That is the kind of integration that we are having with the United States. Mexico is also the second origin country of the tourists arriving in the United States. In 2015, more than 18 billion Mexicans visit the United States, and they spend almost $20 billion. Almost 2 million American people are living permanently in Mexico. From them, we have more than a half a million of American students uh, who are studying at the public schools in Mexico. So. Uh, the U.S. economy is nine times bigger than the Mexico's economy. Nevertheless, 
We have succeeded when we have cooperation. Today, Mexican business people, scientists, professionals, artists, and filmmakers has been strengthening the cultural bonds and ties of friendship between Mexico and the U.S. Our participation in this CAVES annual conference is a good example of these cooperations. We are neighboring countries with complementary economies and societies that are more integrated than ever. We are neighbors, we are friends, we are strategic partners, we are North America! ¡Sí se puede! Kabe is honored by its ongoing partnership with the Confucius Institute at San Francisco State University and throughout the nation. Please welcome its director, John Sinsi. Good evening, everyone. It's my honor to be invited by Kabi to convey our greetings on behalf of Confucius Institute at San Francisco State University and from all colleagues from our fellow Confucius Institute and Confucius classroom across the nation. There are 516 Confucius Institute and 1,176 Confucius classrooms in the world. In the United States alone, we have 110 Confucius Institutes and 501 Confucius classrooms. All of us from Confucius Institutes and Confucius classrooms are feeling confident to join you here today because we share the common mission with you, colleagues from CABI, to support this central vision of biliteracy, educational equity, and 21st century success for all students. We will interpret priorities, initiatives, and services targeted to teachers, educators, parents, and others designed to dramatically increase California capacity to create culturally diverse and competent 21st century learning environments of a high intelligent performance and all English learners and other language learners and to graduate all English learners college, Korea and the first ones, the 21st century ready and prepared to live their lives to all, to their full potential. That is mission we share with Kabi here. Dear colleagues and friends, today, Right here, and right here, all of Con Confucius Institute classroom colleagues from San Francisco State University and the Confucius classrooms from California are feeling more confident and more comfortable because we are playing a role as great by educa educators, teachers, and professionals, just like all of you who are teaching different languages. We will share our programs and present our research on teaching Chinese language and culture in California and across the nation. All we have been doing is to reach our common goals with CABI and with LABI and all bilingual professionals. Fostering academic achievement, culturalizing immigrants to a new society, preserving the minority group's linguistic and the cultural heritage, enable English speakers to learn a second language and develop national language resources with staunch support from parents and the communities, the growth of dual language and biliteracy programs in our schools are on the rise. At 2018 CABI conference, we hope that we will present the findings 
from the latest research on teaching Chinese and share experiences in developing Chinese languages, we also have to learn more experiences in teaching a second language from other language teachers, how to improve learners' communicative skills to reach a high level of biliteracy, strategies in developing dual immersion programs, why it is important for bilingual educators and teachers to apply teaching technology in classroom instructions, and how to motivate our students to participate in language learning activities. I myself was one of English learners. I know how important to learn a second and third language it is for my career and for all young students in this world. We greatly appreciate Kavi colleagues hard working to organize such a great 2018 Kavi conference. We know we are working together, we will shine together. Let's work together to make great things happen. Thank you.